as every river on earth pours its wealth towards ocean that is always sweeping for more, draining the continents. And as fire grows hungrier the more fuel it finds, so, famished by food, the gullet of very Sighton, gulping down whatever its diameter can manage, through every waking moment, spares a mouthful only to shout for more. This voracity, this bottomless belly, as if his throat opened into the void of stars, engulfed his entire wealth. His every possession was converted to what he could devour, till nothing remained except a daughter. This only child deserved a better father. His last chattel, he cashed her in for food. He sold her at the market. But she was far too spirited to stay as a bought slave. Stretching her arms towards the sea, she cried, You who ravished my maidenhead, save me. Neptune knew the voice of his pretty victim and granted the prayer. Her new owner, who minutes ago was admiring the girl he had bought, now saw only Neptune's art, featured and clothed like a fisherman. Perplexed, he spoke to this stranger directly. You with your fishing tackle, hiding your barbs in tiny gobbets of bait. May you have good weather and plenty of silly fish that never notice the hook till it's caught them. Can you tell me, where is the girl who was here a moment ago, her hair loose and dressed in the cheapest things? She was standing right here, where her footprints look, stop, and go no further. Where is she? The girl guessed what the god had done for her. She smiled to hear herself asked where she might be. Then to the man parted from his money. I'm sorry, my attention has been fixed on the fish in this hole. But I promise you, by all the help I pray for from Neptune, nobody has come along this beach for quite a while, and certainly no woman. The buyer had to believe her. He went off baffled. The girl took one step and was back in her own shape. Next thing, she was telling her father, and he, elated, saw business. After that, on every market, he sold her in some new shape. A trader bought a horse, paid for it, and found the halter empty, where a girl sat selling mushrooms. A costly parrot escaped its purchaser into an orchard where a girl picked figs. One bought an ox that vanished from its pasture where a girl gathered cowslips. So Erisaiton's daughter plied her talent for taking any shape to cheat a buyer, straight and crooked alike, all to feed the famine in her father. But none of it was enough. Whatever he ate maddened and tormented that hunger to angrier, uglier life. The life of a monster no longer a man. And so, at last, the inevitable. He began to savage his own limbs. And there, at a final feast, devoured himself.